The summer concert season is in full swing. Full effect. Full. It's happening out there. <laughs> Things are popping off. And if you're headed to a venue that you've never been to before, you're going to want to know where to sit. You're going to want to know what the security's like. You're going to want to know where the sound is the best or what hotels to stay at around there. And where can you go for that information other than the Wook named Tree that you met in the lot? Or the outdated website of the venue itself. Oh, God, yeah. I know where you can go. Where can you go? You can go ask Lorenzo Llama at <laughs> Venue Llama. Okay, so what? I'm going to tell all of you now what Venue Llama is. I kind of just explained it, but I'm going to explain it better. VenueLlama.com is where live music fans share helpful insider venue reviews and information based on their own experiences so you're getting the info from the people that actually go and know it's a place where pro showgoers can quickly review venues and exchange seriously helpful venue intel with one another so head over to venuellama.com today and sign up for your free llama account and start reviewing venues today review venues in the llama base upload photos in the llama gallery and add your favorite scene friendly businesses websites or this very podcast to the friends page. All llamas registered by July 4th are eligible to win free tickets and venue llama gear. And when you go to their website, you can subscribe to their official newsletter. And on that first page, it has information about uh, Red Rocks. I know a lot of people love going to Red Rocks, so it tells you about their water policies, their bag policy, and it has a little link for their YouTube. Lots of fun stuff on there. All right. so, and last but not least, they do have at Venue Llama on Instagram and their YouTube channel that has all kinds of cool groovy stuff going up all the time. This is true. And with that summer season in full swing, the sun is out. We're all hanging out outside. We're going to the park. We're going camping. Ooh. We're going floating down the river. Yeah. And there is nothing better than stopping by Fire on the Mountain. If you live in Portland or Denver, there's three locations in Portland here or two locations in Denver. You go there. You get some takeout, you take it with you to the park, you have a little picnic, or you bring it home after a hard day's work, and then you don't have to cook. It's a good idea to do anytime, but right now, when it's nice and warm out, it's an even better time. And they have vegan options and tons of salads, all kinds of stuff for everybody. They also have your thirst quench with their, they have fire on the mountain brewing that is always cooking up a new concoction and some of their regular staples of beer. These are great beers if you're looking for something to wash down those hot wings. And when you go, it's a really great location. All, all three locations here in Portland and one coming up in Bend. And then we have two out in Denver. They're the kind of place where you want to kick it. Kick it with your family. Kick it with your coworkers after a long day of work. Maybe for a holiday party. So that's another awesome, great thing about Fire on the Mountain. And try to save room for dessert. <laughs> Why is that, Apple? <laughs> because they always have the best like, deep fried Oreos, deep fried Nutter Butters. Would they have Uncrustables? Deep, deep, deep fried, fried Uncrustables. Oh God, deep fried New York cheesecake. Okay, we get it. Deep like, fried. Yeah, it's a thing. They're always rotating too. I think Oreos are a staple. Yeah, and but. if you're not in one of those places, you can go to PortlandWings.com and pick yourself up some sauce. You can get some of their cool swag. And um, yeah, man. Fire on the Mountain is the place to be. I'm just saying because it's the Grateful Dead family and we, you know, this family does stuff really well. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. And hey, again, hot weather equals short sleeve shirts. You want something that is uh, loose fitting and cool and very soft and looks good when you're hitting the the shakedown and you can go over to shop shop tour bus shop tour bus and get yourself some grateful dead inspired merch over there and let me tell you they have a new design and i know i've said this before but the wharf rat design is my absolute fucking favorite shop tour bus design i have it's seen. really adorable the rat is so cool and it he's is. in one of those like New York City coffee cups yep. that you see in every movie. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just go over it. You'll see what we're talking about. It's Grateful Dead song titles told in picture. And it's really unique. It's really cool. And what they do is they send this to you in an all over print box with all kinds of extras on the inside, like toys and trinkets and candy and gum and stuff like that. And, and then 
Well, I was just saying one thing that we never mentioned that's kind of cool is that they do free exchanges. You know, sometimes you get a shirt and you think it's like, oh, I have, I'm a medium. And then it's just like a little bit too tight. Well, you can order the next size up and get free exchanges, no problem. Dope, and they're also giving you free shipping when you put in the promo code No, no Simple, Simple Road. Road, all one word. When you're checking out, they're going to give you free shipping, and some of you are going to get an actual, real life Grateful Dead cassette bootleg. Bootleg. in your order. We call that with a, a miracle pencil. with a pencil to spool it. That's true. So go to shoptourbus.com or go over to at shoptourbus on Instagram. You'll see what I'm talking about. And when you're checking out with all that stuff that you just bought, don't forget to put in the promo code No. no Simple, simple road. road. One of our favorite sponsors is back with us, Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keef blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Yeah. Extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh, yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's, and also they have. If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're giving the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com, one of our favorite sponsors, is back. was funny just now right before i hit record my um <laughs> reminder my reminder just came up on my phone that i have a session with luke <laughs> in a half an hour and oh, well, uh, that's great hey now no why, why is that a, why is that a coincidence hey now no simple road family this is aaron <laughs> this is apple and it's mel and we're back with another episode of no simple road and our guest on the show this week is luke wetson from our breathwork collective what? and my meditation teacher and uh yeah man this is a uh, this was fun i i just was looking at the like the entire recording the waveform that we did we did an hour and 25 minutes with luke or wow more. we yeah. could have done longer too <laughs> it was easy to talk to luke well that's i mean if it wasn't, he would be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> if he was harsh and we're yeah. like, okay, that's enough. That guy's oh, okay. kind of rough. No, man. Yeah, this did flow like very well. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, with that, with, that's a while. We usually don't go that long. I think that um, me doing this with Luke is the best advertisement for who Luke is and what he does because I am such a hard case when it comes to anything that has to do with like having a teacher for anything spiritual. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you're very skeptical. And I think that our lives has proved that you need to be. Yeah. And also real life, not just our life, the life out there. There's so many people that are wanting to cure you and heal you and teach you. And those intentions are good, but there's a lot of people that are just students themselves and they have no business teaching yet. 
Well, not even that. Well, there's no, people I, I was, out there there's that a are million. shady as fuck. Well, too. no, I was. That yeah. was one example, and yeah, people are shady AF or don't really have your best intentions in mind. So to be able to gel with somebody who's actually teaching you something that you can use in your daily life. That's a rare find. Yeah. And yeah. he's, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, he, def, he definitely has had a calming effect on, on the conductor Absolutely. here. You, you look for, very forward to your sessions mm-hmm. oh, yeah. with him and you're very calm. You can feel it on you oh, when, yeah. when you're done with him. Mm-hmm. Kind of like when you take a weed bath. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still functional. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. But I don't <laughs> fall asleep immediately after the session. No. You, it's the way that it all came together with him was really thanks to fish. Yeah. Fish is definitely Thank you, Fish. Yeah. Um the Again. <laughs> again. Yeah. They, they fish is well, keeps on giving. It's brings PH family together. It really does. <clears throat> yeah. We talk about it, so we're not gonna continue, but we met Luke on our way to a fish show and we also had somebody in common that we knew and then just through going to fish shows running we into each kept other. running into each other and now here it is yeah it, it, the thing with him is the thing that makes it palatable and fun and interesting and all of it for me is that i don't feel like i'm being talked down to do you know what i mean i don't feel like i'm whatever do you mean yeah exactly <laughs> I, I have a guy like that at work that like any, you could ask him like, which way is the bathroom? And he makes you feel like a total idiot for <laughs> even, why would you ask that the bathrooms? You know, anyway, he doesn't make you feel like that. And like, I feel like we're doing the work together mm. rather than he's done it. And now he's showing me what to do. Yeah. It's like, we're figuring this thing out together and having an experience. Well, and he hasn't ascended to anything. He's a great teacher. He's a good friend. He's jovial and happy. It's he's still a regular person. Yes, that's not wrapped up in say. some kind of weird garb or oh, no, some I, elite school nope. or some you know crazy regimens that you know you can't eat this and you can't do these whatever. Like there's. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience, <laughs> but um, it's one of the best things that you've done aside from starting to play your guitar every day. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's it changed you in subtle and overt ways. Wow. All right. I guess I don't see it because it's me and I'm on the inside. So yeah, you, I do you feel have more a, chill. You have an underground or I would I'll say this in the past tense. You had an underground um, sh- like anxiety. Ad- well, it, it didn't. Come, <laughs> it, maybe that's what it was, but it came out as anger. Mm. You got fiery very easy and you're a fire sign. And I know I knew your dad <laughs> and that's just kind of like the energy motherfucker yeah everything is so <laughs> extreme and even if you're gonna apologize one second later it's still fuck you motherfucker oh i'm sorry yes, i didn't mean to do that that's true you don't have that it's not the same i've been married to you for 25 years and that has always been a part of our marriage and now it's not and so it's a very it's it's a shift there's been a shift in our relationship because of it yeah i don't feel um, like I don't want to tell you stuff, or I don't want to oh, cause, bother because that. I'm gonna f- flip out. Or, yeah, because you you're gonna wait for the right moment yeah, or something. And, like, and even eh. before you'd be like, oh shit, this is ruined. It's that's it. And then that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. He hasn't done that as much. Like we get an oh shit once he's done the research. Yeah, and like look to see if it's an oh shit problem before he says oh shit. Yeah, you you you've <laughs> tamed your emotions and you use your anger or anxiety differently than you ever did before and you know what's funny about the whole thing is like literally all we've done is sat and be quiet together (laughs) like for real it we didn't like there's no 12 steps that we did we're not reading a book we're not following I, some I, prescribed path. You word. definitely have, you've bre- breathed together. Yeah. And you understand when, but when we used to do that, that's a huge shift in your consciousness. Like that's a big deal to do that with somebody. And it 
it brings you down. It like, it calms you like your nervous system. It, yeah. it makes you a different person to deal with. Well, and, and you know, this isn't just like some dude I met at a fish show and we're hanging out once a week and he's teaching me meditation. Like Luke, well, it is, is, but Luke is part. No, it's not just that. <laughs> no. Like Luke is part of our breath work collective. It's his collective that they do breath work teachings and there's all kinds of like classes workshops. and workshops. And so if you want to get involved with Luke, uh, all of his information will be in the show notes for you guys to get in touch with Luke and, uh, and if you want to look it up right now on Instagram, it's our breath collective and they do daily, uh, breathing in the morning. Um, they have their schedule up on their, um, on their Instagram page and it's not just him, it's him. And there's a, a small team of people that help people stay legit, yeah. even keel relaxed. But, but I think, I don't think I know several people that would really benefit Mo, I, most people that I know would really benefit, would from, benefit from getting in touch with them and just you know it doesn't have to be anything weird I was the last person if you would have told me six months ago that I would be doing this now I'd have been like no fucking way I'm not sitting with some teacher but you're the first person who needed it uh, sure but you I was know. not gonna I wasn't having that I wouldn't I won't tolerate somebody in in the fucking garb with their mala beads in my face like i'm not <laughs> doing that i fuck you it's not happening this i this was right up my alley and th it's more like hanging out with my brother you know what i yeah. mean and then we, <clears throat> yes. we do something rad together and i'm getting a benefit from well, it. he's definitely got something special to be able to offer that to somebody who's so skeptical Mm, you know true. what I mean? Like yeah. to be able to, and he didn't even try. Well, also <laughs> the last mm -hmm. two times that we've seen him in person was at a show. And the last time I was spun when we were together. So I was really like wide open in my space and could feel his energy, who, who he is. There was no pretense yeah. there. Yeah. And that's when I made the decision, actually. I was like, oh, this guy's legit. Like, this is the real deal. If, if that's what's coming off of him, I want to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, and in small ways, it is. It really is. You are you come off different. Cool. Yeah. So if you want to come that, off different. Well, that's, that's like, I probably, uh, Aaron, Aaron and Mel have known him a little bit longer. I got the opportunity to meet him when we were at Fish down at Hollywood Bowl and the opportunity to meet him outside the venue before we got in and got spun, mm -hmm. like Aaron said. And then he came and hung out with us later. And he's just a very, a very calm, engaging, like just present, real sweet person. Well, and I gave him the biggest hug and I was like, this is the best thing in the world that you could do for Aaron. I just want you to tell you that. And this is, I'm so excited for this. Like I, <laughs> in our, like, cause he came and kind of did his rounds with all of us, yeah. you know? And when I hugged him, I, I let him know that. And he was, sorry, I just thought something super weird outside, but Aliens. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really grateful <laughs> to you, Luke and your, just your <laughs> you-ness for being able to get, to a place that Aaron didn't even realize he needed. Yeah. So if I mean, you wanna, I love you before all that, I know even with you, that crazy, you don't have to qualify. I know my craziness. Mm -hmm. I know my crazy. It's my crazy. Yeah. I own. Well, that. you don't know it's how it, it, it affects <laughs> others though, I, but I sure I do. <laughs> that's, now. that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about from another perspective. Oh, I he know, knows. You know he just doesn't care. <laughs> no, he <laughs> cares. <laughs> I, you know what? I know because uh, I grew up with my dad. Yeah. It's the same malfunction i wouldn't call it a malfunction i'll call it a way of being yeah, yeah i was brought up like that yeah like, like look at my mom yeah that's yeah. like very much like your dad and and but in a female side yeah you know just like 
agitated easily and really expletive and just big. Yes, big, big personality. personality. Absolutely. Get it. I totally get is it. Is that how you get it from your Is that why I'm so damn chill? Because my parents are. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, your parents have a lot to do with who we. I, know, Our I was, parents jo- have I was a joking lot to do when with I asked we that. Yeah, well, just, yeah, they're, they're, we're mirrors of them. That's what yeah. we see them doing. So we learn how to do that. You are both literally and figuratively a byproduct of their personage. Do you know what I'm saying? Their yeah. personality oh, yes, and absolutely. their physicality. Yeah. You're both. And sure, there's life experience and there's things that happen to you that didn't happen to them. But the foundation of your personality was put in place by them and how they were brought up. So it's a, you know, it's hard to escape that. And it's when you're brought up. You don't even know you need to escape it either. No, when you're brought up a certain way or you have things that are challenging for other people to be around and you don't know it. Well, you said you do know. No, but I'm saying you don't know it. That's hard. And, and especially like if that's all you've seen, if that's functional to you, mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and then somebody comes to tell you that that's not you're like that everybody d- didn't grow up like that. <laughs> My whole family's like, that. what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You know? So I think it's when we get older and we start having friends and going to their house and seeing their parents or like having a, a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend and we see how their parents are. And then we start figuring out like, Oh, like, I was actually raised really good or uh, uh, dang, or, yeah. I got to learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, I'll say, I just want to say one thing that specific that um, has changed since you started um, with Luke is I don't think I've ever heard you say heart centered in my entire life of being with you. Sure. You've said those two words separately, <laughs> but together I've never heard that. And there's a, the softness that has come with that vocabulary change is a, a, a byproduct of what you guys are doing. Well, I mean, that's literally like the meditation that we're doing is a heart centered meditation. I, I understand that, yeah. but that like, not only did you never say those words together, but you never even thought about that space. No. Mm-mm. And, and to be able to, not only talk about it, but like have the, the feeling of that mm-hmm. or of, of, you know, wanting to even uh, pierce that area or, or talk about it or breathe into it or anything of it. It's just really cool. Well, thanks. And thanks, Luke. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate Thank that. Thank you, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> you thanks know, for introducing heart centeredness to yeah. Aaron. <laughs> you know what though? The reason that I wanted to have him on the show was, I knew what it was doing, what it is doing for me. And we got a big, no simple road family. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody listening that feels like this could be something for them, now you have somebody cool that you can hit up that's been vetted. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I know for a fact that Luke's not full of shit, y'all. So like it's safe to give him a holler. And work with him a little bit. And there's like, you're not signing a fucking contract. They're like, it, it, you're showing up for an hour a week for as long as you want. And that's it. I mean, it's, you don't have to wear, like Mel said, you're not wearing a weird hat and you know, I'm not standing on one hand and whatever, doing crow pose for four hours and holding my breath underwater. And I haven't jumped in ice baths yet or none of that shit. We're just <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> So if you, you I like know. how you added yet in there, though. Oh, yeah. one thing leads yeah, yeah, to like another. Open. You You're never like, know. Yeah. Hey, I think stay open. Why not? You really? never fucking know. Yeah, I think ice bath would be cool someday. I can't even get in a cold pool. But when I was doing Kundalini yoga, I hated cold showers. But there came a time where I actually really enjoyed the effects of God, what sucked. it did for me. Like, no, I didn't like the water on my skin that was freezing, but after I got out, it felt like every single cell of my body was awake. It, because it, you just almost froze no, yourself. But it's, it's different. It's like when we jumped in that, in the, um, when we stayed at Vi- in Vida. Oh, I jumped in the jumped McKenzie. Jumped into the oh, McKenzie River. I stood right there. It was like awake. It was like awake, awake. 
<laughs> awakes oh, awake yeah. you know when awake goes to sleep awake and it wakes squared. up it was like that and there's yeah there's something very special about um pushing yourself I, ice sure. cold is very stimulating yeah to, to the body the brain everything. in fact this last week i had to work it back in the box in the in the fridge at work and i haven't done that since i quit and came back and i was dog tired because i went earlier and right when i got in it, all i lasted was like three minutes and i was like okay I, I don't need coffee, I guess. Like, I was good to go. <laughs> the so. chill zone. Yeah. Well, if you are interested in hanging out with Luke, um, like I said, his info will be in the uh, in the show notes. Our Breath Collective. Yes, Our Breath Collective. And uh, we're going to get you to the conversation that we have with Luke right now. But first, we're going to do A the business. No Simple Road business. First of all, the first thing I want to tell you about is follow No Simple Road at No Simple Road on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can also go to www.nosimpleroad.com. You can get a tarot reading from Mel and I. You can get No Simple Road merch there. We have a calendar of events, all that stuff. You know, that's where you go to find out stuff about No Simple Road. I guess it's kind of dumb that I tell you that because when you want to find out something about something nowadays, you go to the website. But there we are. I did it anyway. And I'm not asking for, yeah, you know whatever. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> you can also go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road. That is how you can support no simple road. And look, if you listen to the show and you're not already a patron on Patreon, you are missing a huge portion of the interaction of the community of this show and us and all the behind the paywall content. You get early access to the episodes. You get them ad free a day early. You get the side roads. Apple's doing one today with Corey. Yes. What is it? Out of the main. It, it is a podcast uh, about yacht rock. Okay. What? Yes. That's great. Yeah. So they're interviewing a podcast Fun. about yacht rock for <laughs> side roads today. And you won't be able to listen to that unless you became a patron on Patreon. So you should probably do that. It'd be nice of you. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. It's a way to support us and you get a bunch of extra content. Yep. And um, you know what? You can go on Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Have we had them for June? No, nope, we have not had a June one. We haven't Dang. had one since like the middle of May. Okay. Here's the deal. Please somebody leave a June review for us. Well, I know somebody new is going to listen to this episode because of Luke. They're a friend of Luke's. Maybe they're a coworker with Luke, a student of Luke's. You're going to listen to this. You haven't listened to the No Simple Road before. What you can do to show your love is go over to Apple Podcasts, press a five star, and write a little tidbit about what you thought about this episode. Wow, that was insightful. I am super stoked. Thanks for... Thanks for everything. And Peace. hey, if you're like, if you're, like solar plexus region is tingling right now, or your ears felt hot when we were talking about leaving a review, that's because that's the universe telling you it should be you. That you should do, do it, it, right? And, and do it. pay attention to that stuff because it's meaningful. And then you know what happens when you leave reviews on there? It like helps other people find out about the show. Yes. Pretty dope. And then we have 971-808-1524. That is the, the no tepid simple road. Line. Tepid line. And I do believe... We have what? Yeah, I think we have That's actually cute. two. That yes, we do. We have two. Hang on. Good morning, fam. It's David from sunny California. David, and I've been listening to the um, to the Friday episode, and at the very end, talking about <clears throat> you guys were talking about the the book that Melanie made for you. Oh shit! And, <laughs> and, and uh. You said it was a, uh, a mistake, <laughs> but I think you should take a cue from Bob Ross. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents, <laughs> and that anyone was meant to be. Anyway, love you guys. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, and I uh, hope you have a beautiful week. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Daniel. Right that on. was David. Day, right I'm on. sorry, yeah, David. David. Wait, happy accident. Wait, one more. Aaron. This is your sunny friend from California, David. Wait. Maybe that didn't come out quite right. But anyway, um, I had to pause today's episode because uh, even if you guys don't put out an episode, um, I think the fam understands that eventually you're going to get it out. 
and uh, and we love you. So Aww. whenever you get the episodes out, I, I, at least personally, I'm happy to hear it um, regardless. So please don't worry about or be sad or think that you're not living up to your potential or our expectations for when the show's going to come out, man. Damn. Um, wow. The love and uh, positivity that you put out is well worth the wait. So, yeah. This guy, man. Uh, you know, feel good about <sighs> it, even if you do have to put a show out late every now and then. Um, again, the show is well worth the wait. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and I love you. Oh, I love you. You know too, what, man. David? Yeah, that was uh, he. He'll that listen was really to that. Needed. Well, I, I, I actually had a hour and forty minute conversation with producer Corey yesterday about this very thing, and he was like, "Look, man, I'm not coming down on you, but you need to know that if you want to take this show to the next level, you need to be on time every week." Like, I get it. If you're fine where it's at then being a day late sometimes I get it. Everybody gets it. It's no big deal, but there's a level of professionalism that comes out when you are on time every week and people can count on your show. And so, and then today I, this, all, both of those things are opinions. Those are not facts that Corey has no science, no data to back that up. Well, even though things I, are consistent, that doesn't mean it's successful. Period. You can have a, a consistent shitty thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And so I get where you're coming from, Corey. You're you're right in the broader sense, but David, I am glad that you paused the episode to do that because where I'm at with with the show and the family and what we're working to achieve is like that is being real being late because our life took a turn and made us not be able to record that day that's fucking real and that's what that's, you guys yep. like about the show that's what you guys want you want honesty and it's not honest to try to get out a show just to get out a show that's not honest. If we are busy and we're traveling or our grandson comes or we're sick that day or whatever the fuck happens, that is real life. And that is what I want to be a part of, not a prescriptive. Oh, well, we said it's going to be 9 a.m. on Monday. Who fucking cares? Yeah, yeah. That's just how one third of No Simple Road feels. <laughs> I, I, and I agree with that, too, because like, we, we do kind of give ourselves a hard time. Where, but but life happens and we are always truthful about it. Mm -hmm. It's happened a handful of yeah. times. Well, that's what in, I told him. I six go, years I go in, of in doing it year. and shit happens. Yeah, I told him yesterday. I was Bands like, in the have past to cancel year, tours. Like, I think <clears> we've <throat> not done Monday episodes on Monday, maybe three two or three times there was a while where we were doing all different days of the week yeah we were doing it but we were still getting them out we were getting them out maybe if we were doing doing tuesdays oh we get it out on thursday or you know yeah. so i'm just saying we're real life people we are not fucking the Wait, kardashians what? we're not some fucking aliens we're not Wait, what? perfected we're not we're normal aaron mel and apple and sometimes Shit happens. It's true. And there it, it is. is. Shit does happen. Yeah. So it, I can't argue with the shit happens. Line. Yeah. Like there's just, there's nothing to it. We are consistent. That is the truth. And when we're not, it's because something happens. Here's the and truth. when we're not, we always address it. That's what makes me feel good about it. We're always, we always let people know. We don't just like, oh, fucking cares. We'll get to it Tuesday. No. It's like, this is the reason why. Here are pictures to go I along know. Here's with a that. Cute little picture this is of what Jasper. is going like, on if in you, our life. If you got an attitude after seeing the picture of why we weren't <laughs> recording <laughs> then stop listening to the show period yeah that's my yeah. advice to you yeah that to upset you yeah, Jasper, you saw Jasper's cuteness. face and got upset man yeah you, to you need to go to sleep we're not for you uh here's the thing David thanks man yes appreciate you brother yeah because like, Aaron doesn't you know. need more pressure well he puts enough on himself it's I don't think it's pressure I completely understand where Corey's coming from 100 percent we're not making Corey the bad guy we're just saying that Corey needs to realizes stuff happens yeah 
Corey ain't no bad guy. <laughs> right on. Just you and me, and we can disagree. Is oh. that the is that yacht rock? Uh, yeah, that, that would be a yacht rock song. I don't get it. Anyway, let's get him to the to the thing with Luke. you know what's cool. Is that I was bought, the tepid line, everybody. See I bought the baby uh, boat shoes for this episode. All right, cool. All right, so this is our friend Luke, everybody, and uh, if you want to hit him up, info in the show notes, and uh, we're gonna get you to it. So without further ado. The No Simple Road Crew gives you Luke. Hey. What's up, There we go. Hey, everybody. Long time no see. No, you look wonderful. Thank you. Likewise. So happy to be here with you guys. Yeah. You get the full three-thirds of the wall of sound today instead of just me. (laughs) Yeah. I, it's so funny to see it this way, you know, because I've seen it. Like me sitting yeah. on the floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, since just, somehow we all, all not knowing what everybody else was wearing, uh, dressed in black we and white. We coordinated this for you. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. shit. Right, nice. right on. We're all on the bus. Oh. Sure. I'm, a, I'm a lover of the pocket tee, so thank you all so much. Yeah, right welcome, on. Man. Hey, hey what, Luke, what, what do you keep in your pocket tee? <laughs> Depends on depends on the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer, man. Yeah, right. Um, for everybody listening, why don't you introduce yourself and tell them who you are and what you do and all that? Well, hi, everybody listening. My name is Luke Winson. I'm a human being on Earth. <laughs> um, uh, I'm a I'm a I'm an individual who has looked deeply at um, uh, and 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 investigated deeply identification and the undoing of identification. Um, I'm 45 years old. I live in Encinitas, California. Um, I guess the best identity that I could say for what I do with people in the world is I'm a teacher. Um, I've been a teacher in a lot of different forms. I think I'm a lover of life and sound and music and experience and expression and people, mainly people, you know, which it all comes to. Anyways, in most ways. Um, how's that? But, dude, I think that was probably the best description anybody's ever given on the show. It's very thorough. Period. Nailed it. We're, we're done. Yeah, I just Have pulled that out of my t shirt pocket. Yeah, right that's what we have in this pocket tee. <laughs> so, I want to start with what is your favorite, if you were going to eat junk food cereal, right? Oh, 100%. Like, what's your favorite? Peanut butter Captain Crunch. Yes. yes. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> Mine too. For some reason, they don't carry it at the grocery store by us anymore. Yeah, no, they haven't had it on the, the shelf. You got to go to Safeway. Yeah. <laughs> good answer. That's man. a really good question. What a great opening question. Well, hey. Um, no, wait. Follow you know, up. When I was a kid, we I'm the oldest of four. And when I was a kid, my dad would take us to Safeway on Friday nights to do the shop. When I was like a little kid, you know? Okay. And my little brothers liked um, like Lucky Charms and um, other like. Actually, those O's, like, remember those? Um, I love those O's. I know exactly what, what you're talking that, about. Like the Oat Brand O's, those were actually kind of good. They weren't junk food cereal, really, but they right. probably were. Um, but uh, we, so we, we sampled everything. There was like the Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenberry. Yeah. Like Franken, huh. but it was like the chocolate. Count thing. Chocula. Chocula. Boo- Chocula. Booberry. Right. <laughs> but something, man, like those, those peanut butter balls, those little <laughs> peanut butter balls. <laughs> I would put them in in the milk and just let them fully yes. saturate. That's what I was going to ask. You got to let it get mushy. I couldn't, Other... I couldn't, I couldn't get down with the crunchy. Because then know? it'll tear up the top of your roof of your mouth. Captain yeah. Crunch will tear up your mouth unlike anything on earth. That's when I got my, my partial. I have like a superpower now. I have a metal roof of my mouth. I can eat Captain Crunch dry, no problem. It's great. <laughs> this is Super exactly cute. how I wanted this to go, by the is way. It? This is perfect. <laughs> You know, no, Luke, seriously, man, like I wanted to have you on the show because for several reasons, um, but mostly because of what you and I are doing together. Um, it's, it's only been what, three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. Yeah, man. Uh, it was actually exactly, almost exactly a month ago that I, that I ran into you. At the forum, at uh, the bowl, the bowl. And all three of you going that's into the bowl right. by coincidence, yeah. And our baby, and yeah, that's right. <laughs> and her and her dude, who yep. both have Adam. such lovely energy. 
<laughs> yeah, those, yeah, those two. Right. Superpowers. Um, but yeah, it's only it's and then and then our our you know non coincidental encounter resulted in what we've gotten to do over the last three weeks, Aaron. And it's been really special. Yeah, man. And <clears throat> you know, it started with uh, us coincidentally running into each other at uh, MSG on the street. Yeah. walking but, into the show but before that there was a connection that i i didn't know you luke yet but i knew kind of about you because aaron would like, there was some that kind of connection we you guys followed had. each other on instagram okay but yeah, how did that instagram. happen for a couple like, years okay. how, yeah how did that happen luke how did i we... don't know i think just through like uh the maybe like the the algorithm and the the filtering that it naturally does and i saw your i i just followed you one day um Maybe I, maybe it was other mutual people through the fish world that we know that somebody might have shared something about No Simple Road and I was like that's a that's a cool name and and <laughs> branding um and just vibe you know and, yeah. and I started following you yeah. and then I saw you and then Robbie you guys met Robbie in Hershey Park Robbie yeah. my best childhood friend mm -hmm. um uh and you gave him a ride back one night oh, after a show yeah 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 okay yes. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I met these really amazing people from Portland. They have a podcast. It's no simple road. And I'm like, Oh my God, I follow them. Like they seem rad. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hunter. No, Robbie, Robbie Hunter. There's two my of friend. them. Yeah. His friend, is, his friend is Hunter Hunter. Yes. Right. Or his like, it's a friend of his friend is I've met Hunter. Hunter oh shit. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that that is who you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I've been talking about this whole time. When I met you guys on the street in New York, that's who I was talking about. And his name is Robbie Hunter, like Rob. Hunt, Robbie Robert Hunter. Yeah, his Hunter. actual name is John Robert Hunter. That's wow. crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, the story's getting weirder and weirder the as we go. Thickening. I love it, dude. So I knew what you did from Instagram. I saw, like, the Breathwork Collective, and I saw you doing, like, stuff with other men and teaching and all that stuff. And uh, I am somebody that is very reticent when it comes to that stuff. Like to say that I am sitting with a teacher is like monumental for me to say that sentence. And uh, because I've had such um, bad experience in the past, I guess is the easiest way to say it. However, since I've known you, you've never sat with a teacher. So, and that's 25 years. So that's uh, like, just think about, I, I want to say that on purpose because it wasn't like there's been a bunch of teachers that have been no. like screwed you over or made you yeah. do I, something. I or, saw, he doesn't even listen to us most of the time. No. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> I, I saw what happened with you and 3HO. Except there was just never, that. that's true. But there was never a, nothing ever happened. It was just. You know, like, so, like, you know, when a teacher like takes advantage of a student or they screw you out of money or something like that, nothing like that ever happened with 3HO. It was the more I knew about it, the less I wanted to be involved in it. It, it wasn't um, something that actually occurred to me. So I just want to say that, throw that out there because right. I don't like to talk shit about stuff, even if I don't like it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and again, in when we were going through the initiations in the OTO, I saw the other side of it and what teachers were like teachers. I'm doing air quotes were like with other people. So I was always very um, hesitant when it came to that, to even broach the subject with anyone. But when uh, I saw you in, um, in New York city, oh. special moment, dude, that was so crazy. Do you, I mean, <laughs> well, I just want to quickly flip what you're talking about, about sitting with a teacher on its head. Yeah. Okay. Cause like, you know, as you, as you, as you reference like sitting with me as a teacher, I, I could say the exact same thing as I'm sitting with you. I'm sitting with a teacher. And this is where, what I like to share is that uh, everything becomes a teacher. And really mm -hmm. what you're learning is how to sit with the teacher that's within you. Right. And that is what emerges. Um, yes. yeah, but seeing you guys on the corner. Well, so I was, uh, I did all four, um, uh, April 2022 20, shows um, at the garden and I did them with my, my two, my, my, my two main show friends, Pat Grady and Robbie 
Hunter. Pat lives in Hawaii. Pat Robbie lives in Baltimore. The first two nights, Robbie and I did uh, the third night, but I went I went into a box with our friends. So I didn't really do the show with them. And then Robbie went back to and Pat was gone. Um, and Robbie went back to Baltimore. So I was solo on that fourth night, which is kind of a really fun thing to do. A fish solo experience is, I don't know, for me, it's like a really cool way to easily get around the venue, yes. any venue, um, oh, yeah. and really just like lock into the band and make it like a special moment with you in the band. And then you, and, and then it's when I have, I find like the most magical encounters happen too. Yeah. Um, but walking, so everybody has a reference. I was staying in a hotel in Times Square near Times Square and I just like walked to the venue and got a slice of pizza. I love New York City. I think it's the coolest city in the world okay. for like four days. My dad's from for uh, four days. Know, for four days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll like handle. But um and I walk in and get a slice of pizza and just observing the scene and observing just the, the like the the life force that is New York City. Mm -hmm. Um you know, fourth day of fish. I'm, I was tired. I was really tired. <laughs> and you guys were too. I remember we chatted about that, right? And I saw you guys on the corner, and I was like, I was like, hey, you guys, like, I'm Luke, like, uh, and and I knew I knew it was Mel, and I couldn't really remember. I didn't know for certain that it was Aaron, but then you were like, yeah, yeah, and I and I kind of gave you the the backstory of like my friend Robbie Hunter. You guys met him. Like, I've chatted with you on Instagram before, and you kind of we it kind of stitched together really quickly. And you guys gave me a couple stickers, and I was stoked on those. And we like walked, we walked, we walked across the street, like up to the the lines to get in the venue together. And and I remember you guys even told me where your section was. And um, and I think I kind of as I wandered around, I like looked for you guys at one point, but it was during the show. And yeah, you know, I was, like, yeah, we were we were in the spirit world. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> it, that was that was a special moment, and um, and but it made sense too because like meeting people in person is so cool when you've already felt them on social media. And it, and it was like with you guys, I just, I felt you both, you know, mm -hmm. immediately. I that's, felt like I knew you already. That's exactly Absolutely. what I wanted to say. It was, uh, in hindsight, maybe, maybe not in the moment, but in hindsight, I knew then that we would be doing something like it, there was a, a presence there that yeah. is not always present. <laughs> and then we're at Dick's, flash you know, forward. flash forward, we're at Dick's right. and on the night of the streaker. Yeah. And the, <laughs> oh, the, rest the, in peace. Buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> the rain is coming and it's wild and things are weird. And I look two rows in front of us and there you sit. And I turned around and I see you and you go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah. I love it when this happens. Yeah, man. And yeah, I remember I came up and sat and hung out with you guys for like a while. Like it, we were waiting anyway. Oh, dude, you know? we waited for an hour. Like yep. melt, our faces were melting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he, then they came out and opened with Karini. Yeah, it was, was so <laughs> dope. And you and I were talking about doing work while we were sitting there yeah. and I wanted to ask you then, but didn't have the balls to do it. Like, Hey, can we do work together? But I didn't have the, I didn't have the guts to do it. And I let the moment pass. And I remember after coming home and recovering, like being bummed, like, fuck, I blew it. Like I heard, yeah the voice and I didn't do what I should have done and the moment's gone. And. But think about how perfectly it came together. It came to fruition in, oh my in God. LA. Yeah. Yeah. So flash forward, we see you walking into the Hollywood bowl. I love that. This is all around fish, by the way. Me too. <laughs> this is all taking place <laughs> around fish, but walking into the bowl, we see you, we tell you where we're sitting. And then during the show, you came over and like, I forget what was playing, but. Well, I came and saw you guys right at the end of set break. Okay. And they open with, I can't remember where they opened the second set with. It wasn't one of my top favorites, but they, I'm also reminded again and again at fish that even my non favorite songs, not, songs I'm like, Oh, the song's so cheesy. They can take to a place that oh, yeah. can just oh, open yeah. up. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and we had a moment. Yeah, and I, I finally was like, okay, 
third time's a charm. Like in my head, I'm like, if I don't do this now. Well, and before that, you, Sydney and I had been talking about some medicine that she had sat with. And that was what we were talking about during our trip to L.A. to see them. And then yeah. I had mentioned you before because right. we were talking about my mom and all that connection before. And and then you just p- kind of popped up like you were just there. I was like, oh, my God, Sid, this is who I was telling you about. And you made a really strong impression on our daughter, too. And I will say this. We have so many people that we meet all the time that our kids are kind of like numb to it. Like we're like, Oh, this is the coolest person. <laughs> you love them. And they're like, yeah, versus whatever. this other last cool person that I met. And so they're just like, whatever, you know, but you made a really big impact on her because she had just, like I said, got sat through with that medicine and was like, Oh, and not necessarily had the best you know, connection with the facilitator there. And then when she met you, she was like, Oh, I could, I could totally see doing that with somebody like that. Like that makes more sense. That feels much more comfortable. So that was already kind of like in the air. And to me and for me, my kids know me so well. So if they have a connection with somebody that, um, I do too, or that Aaron and I do too, that makes a huge difference to me. Like it, it just kind of like underscores and solidifies the quality of the person because our kids have been around people our whole freaking yeah. life. It, it, open door policy, you know? So it was just like a really cool thing at that moment. And then to go back and then have Aaron be like, Oh yeah, we're yeah, going to. That's epic. Well, well, you know, what's so funny about that moment is that I was with, um, that was the last night. So I was with, um, a couple of friends of mine, uh, my, the larger group of people that I was with had only come up for Saturday. So I, and I, I was with, uh, really two close friends of mine and, um, uh, they wanted to go in and I was like, no, nah, just, I, I, I feel like I got to wait a second. Like I'm supposed to I literally, I think I said, I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to see somebody. And I walked, we were like up closer to the gate. Yeah. The and I walked down a little bit. And I also had like this, this, this like can, like this beverage that was a mezcal can that I was like, I'm not going to walk in with this so i, I was like i'm gonna find somebody i can give this to and um and the timing of it literally i wasn't expecting or like thinking about who i would see but i just walked down to stand there and be open kind of in the receptive field and then you both showed up and i had seen that you guys were in ventura the day before through social media so i wasn't expecting to see you at these shows maybe we had chatted aaron about like you're gonna be there and maybe. you were like Maybe you said that you guys had done Seattle. You didn't do the Greek, did you? No. Yeah. Um, Greek was hectic. It was crowded in there, man. <laughs> um, um, but the bowl was easy. Um, yeah, the bowl was awesome. Bowl was beautiful. Yeah, but then running into you guys and then meeting your daughter and just that that brief, quick conversation where you shared that with me, and so she, so did she a little bit. I just had this sense of like, like, like a kind of a a perception and a and a forecasting that like we'll probably get to do some really beautiful experiencing together yeah you know? same for sure and that was like i say let me chime in for a second too on yeah. this because i remember when they came back from they met you first at msg aaron they both had talked about you and it was like you're you're gonna end up meeting luke luke is gonna be part of the part of our family we're gonna be doing something together i don't know what mm-hmm. and then dicks because i missed yep. that one they went to dick came back we ran into him again. He's sitting right in fucking front of us. Synchronicity. This is the way shit's supposed to go. Like, okay, okay. All right. I've got Luke in the back of my mind. And then flash forward to Hollywood Bowl. Finally, Aaron, when, when we met you out front for a brief moment, I got to meet you. All I remember is you gave me like a heartfelt, serious hug. Yeah, I remember. Like, oh, I, bro, I for, for just a moment. And then we all had to go off and everything. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, I met Luke. Fucking yeah. like, hey, Luke was cool. Fucking he's gone. And then when you came and hung out with us, and by the way, Mr. Completely is what they went into in the That's second right. set. That's right. So it gave, us, actually, gave us a little is, more time for bonding because I was kind of like, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, this isn't a jammer. But then I remember, and then, and then we both got the opportunity to give each other a big hug and kind of bond more. And then you hung out with us for a bit. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, this is Luke. I feel what they're talking about. And that's funny too, because there was like the, a little bit of like not commotion, but the, 
that those moments of like you still got to get through security, go in, get the seats and settle before the show. Yeah. Like, of, and then the oh yeah, what's up? You guys, hell yeah! You know? And then <laughs> and, and the additionals, like 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 everybody else. Was yes. Like, the, the do you? And then you're right though. At set break, when I came over and saw all of you, it felt way more like we're in we're here boom yeah you know, we're like, settled <laughs> in we had half a show in our pockets <laughs> in our pocket team <laughs> yeah right. I, remember, I remember directly distinctly before aaron me and you connected i think it was like right before i left is where we had that moment and actually we should probably touch on that a little more for mm-hmm. the audience that was really oh, yeah. special but i remember distinctly like having a couple minutes with you and with sydney and with is it Adam, Adam? Adam. Adam. Yeah. Adam, right, yeah, um, and just kind of really like seeing and and experiencing Adam, especially in those moments of like, oh, these are like really, this is like soul family people, mm-hmm. no question, totally. You know? Dude, Did when you- we met Adam. I met him on my birthday. <laughs> Sydney and Adam flew in to surprise me for my birthday, and I just cu- I was working on a, a a pot farm, and I was disgusting i had like shit in my hair. In hair i'm like a long work day but a really good work day it was super fun i come in through the garage and i see my daughter with this adonis next to her with a camera and to surprising me and i was fucking shocked you know i was like what and then that night we all hung out for my birthday and like meeting him in that way that's the kind of person he is. That's how sweet he is. That's the kind of like, he is so loving and so sweet. And so uh, like, I don't even know what the word, but just like down, he's down for us, you know? And I knew that he wasn't even married to my daughter yet. They were together, but like they, I knew I was like, Oh, this is our family. You know, that night, um, He walks out the front door standing on our porch. I had just met him too. Like that. Yeah, day. we all had just met him. And he walks out. We were we had taken some medicine that night. And uh I was like, You're gonna end up being my son in law. And he was just like, I just met this dude. Like, <laughs> I just laid it Don't on. Don't put it. that on me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There was the teacher speaking, wasn't it? I, I guess so, for sure. Thank you for acknowledging that, Luke. And and I do want you guys to get back to your story. Yeah. But um as a partner in someone's life and you see all of the kind of things that mess up your, your partner, you know, like the deaths and getting screwed over when you're at work, you know, looking over for promotions, you know, your kids telling you they hate you. Like you're seeing all your partner going through all these like hard things and, and it hardens them. It it hardens (laughs) their, their heart or their reactions or whatever. So in this fish space, I'm putting air quotes in this fish space, a lot of those reactions are kind of quelled. You're not necessarily holding up that armor Mm -mm. during those uh, moments. And so when the synchronicity kicks in, which is almost always abounding in, in the fish, you know, circle, when that happens, there is like true clarity in, in my the way that I see it, because this is how we can see you two rows ahead, or this is how we can bump into you on the corner, walking across street together. And, and we can take those synchronicities further. We're allowed to get deeper into those synchronicities because of our openness and because of that magical environment. And so when you sit there and kind of replay back to us, how you see us or how you see Aaron or, or you're part of it. This is like um, underscoring that like, this is true. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be making these connections with people. We are supposed to wake up and get up in the middle of the end of the last set to go walk or the first set to walk over and have these moments. Like that's important. And even though it's a fish show and to anybody else that's outside of our um, the scene that doesn't understand that it doesn't matter. It do- no. right. It doesn't so matter. Many people in my orbit are just like, what, the- what does that even mean? <laughs> it's hard to describe, man. I'm like trying to explain it to my mom and stuff like that. And she's like, Oh, you know, these are cool stories. They're not just stories. These are timelines. These are things that are happening. They're put in our way. And so I just wanted to throw that out there because when I met you like the very first time, 
I immediately loved you. Mm-hmm. Immediately loved you. I was like, oh, yeah, dude, right. that's like our brother. Yeah. Like, I feel like I don't know why I love this guy so much, but I love him for us. Like, I knew that, <laughs> right? I, I, I said that. And you you're on one of our um, collages that when I, I made. I walked down my stairs, you're front and center in this collage. Oh, shit. I sent you a picture. That picture. I love it. I just realized that when you said that. because okay. Yeah. Well, right. I, I put it because it was like a timestamp moment for me. Like the, all the pictures in that collage are some of the fun stuff that No Simple Road's done. But that, that one, was from Dix, right? That, that was yeah, there, Dix. yeah, that yeah. was from Dix. But it was like a timestamp for me to yeah, like an imprint, exactly. Where it was yeah. like, whoa, this guy's in our life now. And then exactly. later on, now you guys have this moment. So on No Simple Road, like there's never been much filter here yeah. <laughs> at yeah. all. There, there's, but there's personally, there's a level that I haven't, a a line I haven't crossed here. Shared. And I'm going to do it now. (laughs) So just laying that out there. Uh (laughs) No, man. Exposing your vulnerability and your, um, your vulnerability to the world is scary as fuck for anybody doing it in front of an audience is even more terrifying. And even with being open on the show, like I said, there's certain things that have remained private for whatever reason, because of baggage, because it's not a good idea, you know, whatever. But in the moment that you and I had at the Hollywood bowl, um, basically what I said to you, if I remember correctly was I need help. Like I'm, I've got a community that I'm ahead of. I'm sitting in this position and I've got baggage that I don't want to carry into that. I don't want that energy to flow down to anybody else. And, um, I need help. And that's hard, man. That's a hard thing to do to say that, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah. And your response was the, the best fucking response. It was. Uh, yeah. As I recall, if I could quickly interject, please. what you said was I have stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You no, know, and it was alluded after you. It, that was like an allude that uh, you alluded to that after you had talked about like the the bearing of responsibility in 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 part in this and probably family stuff too, um, and a quick uh, like kind of an analogy that relates to this is I was I will probably talk a little bit about this, but I was a high school teacher for almost twenty years mm-hmm. here in San Diego, and I worked with kids with learning disabilities and ADHD, right? And I taught a lot of books. I was an English teacher, right? Um, <clears throat> one of them was a book of mice and men. Everybody knows mm-hmm. that book. And in that book, there's this reference, this thing called, and that's about migrant workers in California during the Great Depression or right after the Great Depression, um, who came and worked on big ranches and everything. And there was this this term that was used then called the invisible grain bag, right? So it was like, you know, they'd be out in the fields all day collecting grains and like dragging huge bags and everything, right? And then the invisible grain bag was this thing that they perceivably on an energetic level kind of carried. And in a sense, like you were discussed, you were basically referring to your uh, invisible grain bag of like life experiences that we collect, right? Mm. That we feel like weighed down by it's yep. like a big bag that everybody feels like they're dragging. And in that moment, when you said it, it was just like, I don't know, it just came to me to say like, that may be, we all do, you know? And we all have varying levels of that, but there's this, there's a reality that is, un, what did I say to you? Do you remember? You, you said, dude, it's okay. None of that has bearing here with us right now. That's behind you. And I was yeah. like, oh shit. And yeah. you said, I'm going to show you how to stop reaching for what you want and and lean back into it, ease into it and let it come. Yeah. Drop the bag, man. And it, like I said, it was 
It was the perfect answer because. It was the only answer. Yeah. Well, that. Well, I, I just say that because I know you and <laughs> you'll be turned off by one word, mm-hmm. one look, one attitude, one anything. <laughs> and this is me. This is what's in common between Aaron Apple and I is like we have discernment. And if somebody's trying to come in, I'm not saying that we're never wrong. We we <laughs> definitely have been wrong before, but we have a really high percentage and there's three people to kind of echo that. And so if somebody's going to come in and say something to us, that's going to be flashy and kind of bullshit, it may go past me. It may go past Aaron, but it's not going to go past all three of us, you know? And so for you to say something like that to him, it has to be the right thing. And not like, Oh, Luke, you can't say anything. Meaning like if you would have said something else, it wouldn't have just, it wouldn't have, it would have fell flat or it would have not had the impact. But that had that impact and it because it's been time too. I will say that it's been time. It's been time for a long time for, yeah. for this. You, you know, also in that experience, Mel, what, what I remember is like before I left you all, like we, we had that exchange, Aaron and I, and we were kind of on the outskirts of your row, right? Yeah. The ball on, on Mike's side kind of, yeah. I think you guys were in like F2. In fact, mm-hmm. I, don't, I remember. That detail. is it. And, and like everybody else is to the right. And I was between the two of you. And, and as I went to say goodbye to you, cause I wanted to get back down into like, I was down in the pocket. I was down in the garden. <laughs> like a bun- I had a bunch of different friends in different sections down there. And it was awesome being like that close down, but I would, I'd love being there with you guys. Um, but I just know how you can end up kind of, if you don't move, if <laughs> that's, that's a whole yeah, different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Anyway, we know. <laughs> I remember I said to you, Mel, I go, yeah, I think, I think Aaron and I are going to do some work together. And you just looked at me and just like grabbed me and hugged me. And I could just feel like this is like, this was, this is all a long time coming. And this is mm-hmm. going to be beautiful for everybody. And I'm including me. It's a joy and blessing that I get to share what his, it's not, none of it's mine. No. All I'm sharing is what's come through me. Literally, this is what my, one of my, one of my deepest, closest, longest standing con- still teachers, Henry Shipman is his name. Um, I had a, a what's called a dakusan with him this morning, in fact, which is dakusan is a Japanese word. It means interview. Um, and he, I, I remember so many times in the last 10 years, I've told him, like, thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for who you are. And he just has this attitude that I love to share that, thank God, I've been shown this modeling of it's not mine. None of it's mine. It's just what's coming through me into you, which will come some way through you, whether it's through a sharing or just a vibrational um, resonant, like kind of echo outwards is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. these, I think it's important to share stories like this, first of all, because it, first of all, it normalizes talking about it. Second, I believe that a vast majority of the people that, we're around when we're at a show or having experiences like this, maybe not all, but a vast majority of people are having their own individual moments with whomever or whatever during the show and being able to come out of that space and talk about it helps us integrate that more. Totally. Right. And, and, and to grab onto it too, because I think, I know for myself, I would have these epic downloads or moments and then try and talk myself out of that it happened after, right? But I wanted to ask you a question, man. Like when you are having an experience like we've had where multiple synchronicities line themselves up and, and, uh, you hear that like voice that's telling you to do something or you meet somebody and you know, you're going to do work together or whatever. What do you think that is, man? I don't think Mm. think that's part of it. And I think it's learned. It's been a process of kind of like a little bit of what we're doing of, 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 
recognizing the difference between con conceptual mind or ego and what in one approach or one view is called um, clear deep heart mind or, or heart mind or deeper presence or the deep end of presence and learning how to work kind of through ego versus being unconsciously dominated by ego and, and identified with excessive thinking. Um, it's just a feeling. I mean, with you, with all of you, it, it's a feeling. This is a great example of it. I didn't know we would do work. I just knew that there was a deep connection on a really deep level mm -hmm. immediately. You know? um, and, I, you know, it's so funny. To, there's Maybe I could give a little context here because um, uh, relative to Fish and the whole kind of jam band music scene, not even that because I'm not really interested in anything, but seeing only one band. <laughs> 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 um, uh, but I started seeing Fish in 1994 when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, in Northern Virginia, that's where I, I grew up in the DC area. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with them and it changed my life. And Aaron, you and I have talked about that. Maybe we'll get into the actual specifications of my first experience later. But um, I graduated high school in 1996 and I went to, and you know, Jerry died in 95. And there was a wave of change that happened on the fish scene after Jerry died with a lot of, a lot of that scene's energy kind of spilling into the fish scene. And you could really feel it in the, the lot scene there um, in shows I was going to in 95 and, and, and in 96, especially it was really pronounced, dark. really strong and intense and dark, definitely. And lost a lot of lost souls is how it felt and intense, a lot of intense, almost borderline thuggish gangster, hippie thug gangster combo. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, that's the only way I can put it. I was young. So I was only 18, 20, 19, but I went and saw the shows at Red Rocks. Um, the four nights in August 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. And why I remember dates really well. Why do I really remember this? It was because my 19th birthday was August 7th, 1996. And I only had tickets to two of the four nights. The Strangely enough, I remember this too, the Tuesday and Thursday, which was August 5th and August 9th, the second and fourth shows. And on August 5th, I was in the show when in the town of Morrison, there was like, an overflow of kids and, and hippie kids and kind of tour rat kids uh, and a strong police presence. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody, I think the story was, is that a kid threw a, a beer bottle at a cop on a horse mm -hmm. and the cops went nuts and um, tear gassed or, or pepper sprayed and arrested 120 just kind of belligerent kids. And I saw this like, cause I was camping up, with some friends up the up a creek near, near the venue and had to get through like a wall of like literally like wolf looking police officers oh you my know God. colorado gnarly intense with disgust towards like this whole community and a lot of like very belligerent antagonistic kids that were screaming at the cops and it was just like and i saw it and i just was like i don't i don't like this i don't this is this feels gross. Like this doesn't equate and balance out to me what the joy of the music is. I also wasn't like evolved. I hadn't had a real life yet. I mean, I was a kid still. Mm -hmm. And and then I went on to college and, and I saw him for a few more years, but I really had this flavor from those experiences mm -hmm. in Colorado that by like 2001, I think I was like, I don't, I'm not, I'm over it. I don't want to do this. Anymore. There's yeah. a different direction that my energy is going to move and, I had started surfing, so that was really a big pull of like just enjoyment and and where I wanted to, what I wanted to do with my time and um uh, and I moved to California. I went I lived in Mexico for a year um and uh, and then I got really good ways where I lived in Mexico and then moved to California. So I was kind of far away from it and very removed from the scene for like twelve years, thirteen years. I didn't see him, and for a couple of years, I started to hear like. Oh, they're back because I knew they had taken hiatuses. I couldn't even listen to Fish. I could still listen to Jerry, the dead, um, but I couldn't listen to Fish. And um, when I started hearing they're good, they're they're really good, they're better than ever. And and so, you know, so it came back around in 2014 for me. And I went and saw the Meriwether shows, and literally it was like I felt, you know, I felt the feeling again of like, oh my god, I cannot believe. I've abandoned this for like, I love this, how this, what this band does. And you felt the feeling and, you forgot. And I, for, I felt the feeling <laughs> I forgot, but then it was like for, for 
a little while for probably five years from 2014 and probably till 2019, 2020 that I just would still go to shows and kind of be like affected by the energy mm. in a way where I just, I just kind of saw a lot of like, just like lots of drinking and just like fucked up people where I was just kind of like, Ugh, this is like wading through a lot of intensity of people that are just really like the party side of it where I was like, I don't know, like, I like being more mindful and I still love to have a good time, you know, you know, Yeah. but, but something switched in the last like three years, two, three years where, um, I just kind of decided to take on the opportunity to be the kind of change that I would want to perceivably see. And something in that switch of like that, that mental choice of, wait a minute, what if I choose to see like the bright and light and beautiful connection and the compassionate side of things, even with people that are fucked up, doesn't mean I have to engage people that are fucked up, whatever. Um, but from that stance, from that shift, I've started to have more and more of these spontaneous encounters, which is, which is sort of out of mind. It's out of thinking mind. It's like, you can't think up. I couldn't have like conceptually gone, like I'm going to go down and like find Mel and, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no way. I mean, it's just like the, and then and then you're open to this this flow of like it's sort of like not to sound cheesy or like uber spiritual saying this, but it's like sort of the, the flow of grace. And what's up, everybody? If you're like me and you're trying to do better for yourself and what you eat in this new year, I have something really cool for you. Factors delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day way easier. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You're going to have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Sign up and save. They've done all the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So here's what you got to do. Head to factormeals.com slash no simple road 50 and use the code no simple road 50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code no simple road 50 at factormeals.com. Take all the guesswork out of trying to do the right thing for your body. Fuel up easy and fast. Go check out factor. Doesn't, and doesn't the, sound the, cheesy at all. It yeah. doesn't. It, well, it, 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 it's a great way to say it. You are in a certain kind of a flow because you're turned on you you've kind of like i don't want to say cut off but like whatever that other activity that's going on you know it's there it's not going to go anywhere because and they have just as much right to be there the partiers the drunks sure, or whatever heck yeah but just because you're at a place for some reason doesn't mean that another place is there another person's there for that same reason so you yeah. can get what you need and that other person can get what they need one in the same and it's how much are you allowing someone to pull you out of your experience mm. versus mm. letting them have theirs you know like you know what and you know what i found too mel is like that observing it uh like kind of arise within me you know in the in the in the lens of its judgment it's kind of like and softening back behind it and just like seeing it allowing it but not allowing it to be the thing that like dominates and leads my experience and softening back is what's really created this spontaneous opening where these kinds of things have happened. I'll tell you a quick anecdote if you guys want to hear a cool story. <laughs> so I went to the Greek shows and I stayed with a beloved friend of mine who lives in San Francisco. Um, his name is Dave Klaus and um, Dave is who I, he's a Zen priest, but he's also, he's mid fifties. He's um, a retired public defender. Um, and he's just an incredibly love filled, present, clear, Buddha. Um, you know, he's got two kids that are just finishing college now and a lovely wife and live in San Francisco and I've stayed with him before there. And, um, so it's cool to have these friends that are in like one foot in the, in the world of Zen and Buddhism and deep meditation practice, but also love to have a good time, love to boogie, love to get down, love to have love art, love people, love food, love culture, whatever, you know? Um, and Dave is kind of new to fish. He's only seen a few shows. And so when they announced it, uh, well, actually, when the tickets went on sale, 
around then, um, when actually when lottery, when the lotto happened for the spring tour, I was in San Francisco in January and I didn't get the Greek shows. And I thought that was going to be a really difficult ticket to get. Um, but I was kind of like with him and I didn't get him. And then we knew that they were going to go on sale and the following Friday on Ticketmaster. And I'm like, you got to get on there with me. It's like a hands on deck kind of thing, <laughs> but we got him. No problem. We got three day passes and, and he was like, he was with it. He was like three shows. Okay. Um, you know, that sounds like a lot, but I'll go. And, um, so we went to the first night, just him and I, and we got early entry. And remember I told you our oh, early yeah. entry number, like 30, you guys 30. had Mexico was also 33. Oh shit. <laughs> I didn't know about early entry until that Sunday. Uh, I think it was that Sunday when I was like, yeah, getting ready to, to go up. My friend Alyssa told me about it and I got, I, I entered and I got it, you know? And, but anyway, so we had a really great first show. And then the next night, these other two friends of his, um, one of whom I'd met, the other who I hadn't met, Sorry for all this context. No, I man, no. please. I, I love this. We have work. a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Tell a story. <laughs> uh, Malcolm and Betsy um, came and met us. And um, we're in this uh, we're in this group training together right now. That's been this three month thing. It's called the it's called the jhanas. It's jhanas are like these stages of deepening concentration. And they come out of the um, Buddha's actual like Buddha, Buddha the historical Buddha's um sermons and talks that he gave after his awakening and they're they're basically where he explained these deepening levels of stabilizing into concentration states in okay. meditation and um so anyways we're in this training together so i knew i'd met betsy in january but I, and i felt malcolm who lives in santa cruz who's just such a brother he's so cool and so they came we all met up for the second night we had a fantastic time together um even though i didn't do most of the show with them i was in a different area and then the third night was um april 19th which was bicycle day. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. I had some friends that were like way up in the line who fortunately were like, they were like, yeah, you can come up here and hang out with us. Cause I knew the Greek was so hectic. This space was so tight. It felt like the venue was oversold. It's a wonderful venue. It's so cool, but it was like, it was a bit eggy to get your space and to hold it. And mm -hmm. a lot of people with tarps and blankets. So you'd get in there. If you, even if you got in early, it was like, like, Space was very limited. Okay. You know? And so I kind of said, like, okay, I'm going to be the one that goes in for us. And he'd give me a blanket. And so I got in really early. But once I got in, it was like clear that whole bowl, all the sections was like everything was quickly getting filled up. So I ended up kind of right in the middle, kind of like between um, Paige and Trey, like all the way up at the very top. If you've ever been to the Greek, you know uh -huh. what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, like levels. Um, and I put my stuff down and I kind of sat on the top of the wall at the very thing. And I was waiting for them to come in and it was, it's filled up so quickly. <laughs> my right was this older couple that looked like somebody's parents, very quiet. And it's just like, I'm social. So I'm talking with people around me and this is like early, you know, it's like five thirty. Okay. Right? And there was a earlier shows cause of the curfew and everything. Um, and then to my left are like these like kind of humble, like, pot growing kids they're cool young kids right and they immediately are like hey would you like some lsd and i'm like um they're like you don't have to take it now if you just like to have some i'm like sure thanks sure you know because <laughs> there, there was like lsd was everywhere i mean it was bicycle day right. everybody it seemed like and um <clears throat> so they gave me some blotter you know and i just kind of chatting with them and and um and then uh Dave and Betsy and Malcolm finally get in and they come up to kind of like the wall behind me and take that space and Betsy comes in and, yeah. <laughs> and I just, and then, and then these people that were like to our left were really sweet, younger, these, these two guys and this girl, younger and they're sweet, but they had some people come and meet them that were very, very loud and very belligerent. Like okay. this guy came up and literally like, like, he just like opened his mouth and was like, ah, and he just had, he must have had 15 hits of acid in his mouth. Oh, this shit. This is at like 530. And I just was kind of like, whoa, like the wave of energy hit me of like, well, and then he was literally like, like just yelling and he had a, like a baggy and he said, who wants Pressy? Who wants a Tesla? Who wants, you want a Tesla? You want a Tesla? And he's like literally like throwing them out to people on the walkway. <laughs> and it was like, and I was just kind of like, dude, this is hot. This guy is fucking hot. Like this is, this is, 
what the? okay and i just was kind of like nah man is this guy gonna be like here in this in this zone during the show kind of I got my my here, man. Come on, man. and then and then i noticed that like like there's just this like darty looks coming from this other couple that are like to our right that are just have been standing there and 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 during the time they've been there for the hour you know i said something to the guy you know and he just was kind of like very dismissive like very walled off many and so i kind of had this weird sense and malcolm and dave who's a former da he knows he can read people yeah. like a book he goes i think that these people on our right might be narcs oh and I just was kind of like, ah, oh, that would make sense. And we're like, kind of like in the crosshairs and it's not clear that we're not, and it didn't matter, but like, you never, I mean, we, we almost forget about like that aspect. Yeah, yeah. That that's absolutely. Because I mean, right? there's so many people now, right? Yeah. Still, it's, there's got, it's got to be there. There's got to be people from the fucking DEA and who knows the fucking CIA, who knows what kind of organizations are yeah. in that scene doing some kind of not damage control, but some kind of like control. Yeah. Control, right. So what was so funny was in the moment, like Malcolm and I had this quick conversation and we came up with this word inceptitude. <laughs> inceptitude is this, is this attunement oh, wow. from intuition and perception of, a, of choosing an attitude that remains clear. That like, even if you observe your own judgment, even if the scene around you and the environment around you is like sort of threatening or intense or, or like, <clears throat> un, um, not, not your unfavorable. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not kosher, not cool, you know, like hot, uh, you still have it's it ultimately in, in, within you is where it's the only place that you can resolve anything. Mm -hmm. And oh, there's shit. just no reason to be anything but completely like the inceptitude was the choice to be comfortable in here, no matter what's happening out there, you know? And, and that was like this spontaneous thing that, that like, we literally was like, I don't know how, but we were like, yeah, this is like an inceptitude opportunity. <laughs> we're like, that's a word. Yeah. And we're like, is that even a real word? It's not. And I was like, we should enter that in like the dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> it is now. It sure <laughs> is. So now, so then, so then in, in reference to where, where we've gone in this conversation, uh -huh. you know, like this, this inceptitude, like I, sh I love sharing it. And now it's like going to get shared with your audience. And yeah. Stuff. And it's so beautiful to take inceptitude into everything you do, but like, especially to show. And I think like to back it way up to your question, it's that, that might be just it. It's like this remembering and choosing that there's a space and truth that's already, already here that I can relax into no matter what's happening and lead and be led from that. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> part no, of the no way I'm wondering what happened with the, were they narcs or did anything not, else well, happen? Did that you... guy, that guy, uh, like kind of came and went during the first set and then he was kind of gone. Okay. <clears throat> I, I just can't imagine how hard he was tripping. I can't, I don't even know. I mean, I just, I can't imagine what that would be like. I mean, I not to, not to be a dick or anything, but like, energetically mm -hmm. if you're in that type of situation where you're all tripping and there's somebody that comes that's out of control not not oh. out of control just a lot their energy is big and it's causing waves where you're at there's a way to non-verbally extricate that person from the situation yeah do you I like that yeah, yeah. there we've got we've gotten good at that there's a you mm -hmm. can you can push somebody away you know what i mean and not being mean but just like hey getting in their space hey this is my space you're 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 making a mess on my floor bro and I try and keep the floor clean here. So can you totally. instead of the wall of sound, it's the wall of silence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, there, and there's nothing wrong. I hate to do that. But me and Aaron have gotten pretty good at that it is there's nothing wrong with a well-placed elbow or something <laughs> every once in a while or a foot stomp like, oh, sorry, bro. Do it a few times. And then Whoops. they realize like, like, oh, if I stand here, I'm going to keep getting, you know, I mean. My foot's gonna hurt. Yeah, and yeah certain man. venues are not an issue like that. Like the like the the bowl was awesome. Yeah, or dicks, yeah. or yeah. But but the Greek was really like 
this intensity of, of compression, you know, there's value in that of like being able to go like, well, claustrophobia is real. People are really in my space. And I do have some semblance of like my bubbles, my space. Can I please have. And, yeah. You know, yeah, man. And this is also why personally, I don't like to, I don't like tripping in public. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard for me to take LSD at a show. It's, it's gotta be like, the stars have to be in perfect alignment that day. There has to be, I have to be like really, really in my center and with, it's hard for you to take LSD anywhere. Period. But yeah. at a show, like <laughs> a show it's gotta at be, home. Yeah. It's gotta be, you know, the, the first night of Dick's last year though we did and it was fucking magical, you know, driving, I, um, driving I just find that like the, the with mush, mushrooms feel too emotional to me and they've always yes. felt like, and I think I kind of had an experience some time when I was, um, oh, my parents are probably going to hear this. Mom and dad love you. Um, right. my friend, my summer after senior year in high school, I just tripped on mushrooms like more times than my developing brain probably should have, should have. Yeah. Right. It did, but it's, and I'm fine, you know? Um, but definitely like I've had an, uh, a bit of a hesitancy with, with, with that medicine and LSD, um, you just never know how much it might open up within you. Crack you know? shoot. And, yep. Yep. But what I wanted to say is about what you were just, the story that you just told, like, you know, the way that you describe um, your experience and then also like the practice that you're in, what really like set me at ease was there was no jargon. There was no like, spiritual one-upsmanship there was no like i'm sitting here and you're sitting there kind of bullshit there was no like you don't know this lingo like that shit it was just very clear and simple and like normal conversation and made the most sense and it and i told you this i think it, it, when we were hanging out in one of these times in the last three weeks, like mm -hmm. it's all so familiar. Yeah. It's right. so familiar to me and like so comfortable. Yeah. And even in three weeks, man, I, I have, I can see a change in my head in how I'm going about stuff. And I, I've done a lot of stuff in my life, man. I've been a lot of places and I, can't really remember a time that I can say that with as much surety as I am right now. Like just a very short period of time. I'm like, Oh, this is like doing something. I can feel it and I can see it. I want to know Luke, how like, can you talk about the origins of our breathwork collective and of our breath collective? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I um, mean, I'm not, that's not really not exactly work. what I'm okay. doing, okay. Darren, but um, we're not, we did a, we've done a little bit of breath and I sense that interestingly enough, what the kind of work that I do with people, the, the energy and space I get to share with people um, uh, often goes breath into kind of presence work, right? Um, Aaron is the, uh, this is like, I just, my feel and sense and interaction with him was the opposite. Like we, we're pro I sense that we're, we're going, I mean, I see it happening. That breath is like, that. that's like, we'll do that like later. That's like breath. So our breath collective um, is, a biz is a business that I'm a co-owner of. Um, it's an online breath work um, and breath education platform. Um, it's, uh, it's currently owned by me and my very close brother, one of my best friends. Um, Reese Peluso is his name, he lives here with me. Um, and Reese and I have been friends for a long time. Um, but back in 2000, I can't remember if it was 15 or 16. And it's kind of funny cause I'm really good with dates, but, uh, Reese's wife, who I knew from years ago, a yoga training and the yoga world, um, uh, she contacted me and said, Hey, I hear you're doing, I've taught yoga for, um, and incorporated breath practices in the context of yoga. Um, for 15 years in San Diego and um, lots of different styles, lots of different teachers, lots of different approaches um, with all 
physical practice, um, uh, like kind of somatics and subtle body work, um, breath, breath technique, breath practices. But she called me and said, would you um, breathe with Reese? Would you take him through a breathwork experience? I hear you're doing that in your classes now and you're doing it more publicly. Would you do it with Reese? And I'm like, yeah. And I said, yeah, I, I will. And I didn't really know Reese that well. I knew him from the surf world. Um, I said, I will, but like, do you want me to breathe him or does he want to breathe? Mm. And she goes, well, both. Because the reality is like, when we want something for somebody, it's different than them coming to that place within them where they go like, I'm ready. <laughs> oh yeah. Very different. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just a great, just to <laughs> try to get somebody to trip with you. Um, who's not ready to trip and you see how yeah, no. poorly. Yeah. You know? Pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, uh, so I breathed with him and I watched him go through this um, experience where it was like he just completely cracked open. And it was like this clarity emerged through his eyes and he was like, what the fuck was that? What is this? I'm into this. And then I didn't hear from him for like three weeks and he called me and he was like, dude, I've been doing the breathing you showed me every day. Let's <laughs> hang out. Let's breathe together again. And I'm like, cool. And then um, and then he went off to... Um, to Poland and, and did a training in the Wim Hof approach with breath work. You guys know who Wim Hof is? Oh yeah. yeah. Everybody does nowadays, right? Yeah. And his, me his method is effective and popular and cool. Mm -hmm. And, and also incorporates a lot of the cold exposure stuff, yeah. which, um, which I've had a lot of experience in. It ain't my cup of tea. It ain't my jam. I'll, <laughs> I'll take a sip every once in a while. I'll take a dip, but damn, it's fucking hard. And it's really powerful because it, it's this really interesting experience between observing the mind in reaction to the body and how the mind can dominate the movement of the body and the breath is this bridge between anyways so i digress so reese got trained in wim hof we started doing this thing at his house every sunday morning um uh and just inviting friends um and we would at 8 a.m we would meet there and we'd do about 45 minutes or an hour where he and i would co-lead like just a bigger open breathwork experience typically with tunes, like we're, I'm really into all kinds of music. We're both into all kinds of music. Um, and uh, we'd play fun, really good tunes and people would breathe and it would be like a dozen people. And, and then we'd have tea and everybody would one at a time go into his um, cold plunge, um, which is a legit ice you know, freezer, um, uh, a 14 cubic foot freezer converted into an ice bath. So it was like 33 degrees, a oh. cold, yeah. sincerely cold water right and going in there for two and a half three minutes is a major physical mental and can be a very emotional emotionally powerful thing uh and then we do would do like this gratitude circle share and everybody would just go around at the end everybody's sitting there in like towels and wet and in the sun at like mid-morning on a sunday and we'd share and it was just a really powerful community building thing we didn't know what it would turn into um and and then we had a third partner, um, uh, a, a woman that um, we were close with, who's no longer a part of our organization, a, ther a trauma, th trauma therapist specialist who lives here named Kim Kimberly Johnson. And she had the idea. She was like, what do you guys think about like the three of us doing something like online with this and making it like a subscription model? And it's like a live morning, 15 minute breathe Monday through Friday. And this is pre COVID. This is like, so literally we came up with some names and some branding and some ideas all of a sudden like our breath collective and this is like a sunday in i think this was like in july of 2019 at reese's house on a sunday we decided to stick around and the three of us like brainstorm it and we looked up the instagram handle and it was available and we created our breath collective we created some little like i had a cool picture that was like kind of like a sunrise happening over like mountains and 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 that just made sense with like waking up and breathing we shot a couple videos of like hey we're like reese luke and cameron this is our breath collective and this is what it is and we're gonna launch and we started on facebook live as like a closed group um and that was like the foundation of it was this monday through friday 6 a.m from the west coast 15 minute live guided breathe that was articulated by me reese cam or a couple other people who were had enough experience and had done some trainings that they were able to kind of step in and lead breathes. Mm -hmm. Um, and 40 bucks a month, you know, and we'll category all the breathes into a library and it's a kind of a community hub. And, and that opened 
people's like curiosity up. Um, and we had a lot of our local community that were like, that were like totally in and support. So when we started and launched it, it was like all of a sudden we had like 85 people that joined in the, in, from off on the onset of it. And then, um, and you know, it was, it was, it was a bit of a grind in the beginning. It was like getting up every morning and like whoever was, was leading the breed, there had to be other people online elsewhere to safeguard it in case there was a, a Wi-Fi issue or a network issue or a Facebook issue. Now you have a business. <laughs> and, and that was where it really all started. And then people very quickly became intrigued with like, I want to know more about this. I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's going on like biochemically with my nervous system, you know, like, um, <clears throat> like with what I'm experiencing in this. And, um, and then COVID hit. You know, and so our timing of being up and running online with a website, with a, wow. with a platform, I can't remember exactly when we transitioned. We transitioned from Facebook Live to Vimeo as a platform, and now we're on this thing called Circle, um, which is like an actual app offering so people can do it on their phones easily. Um, but it quickly turned into like we, we developed a um, month-long intensive that, that gets into just that, like the biomechanics, um, uh, the the the, the like literal, like physical mechanics of what's happening in your body, um, all the chemistry and science, which is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but I've kind of learned a lot from being with the people that I've been associated with. And um, also kind of in, in need of like understanding the science to be able to explain it, um, which also, you know, only already meets like this non-science, this metaphysical part. Um, and that what's happening with the nervous system and everything when you breathe, um, and then out of that, we saw more interest with people like wanting, uh, more and like, wanting to learn how to teach it. So we developed a six month facilitator program and I'd done a lot of, I'd been involved in a lot of different, like 200 hour yoga training programs. So I kind of knew how to put together a high quality structure. And then with, with Reese and a lot of other people that were involved with us, we were able to kind of fit the pieces in and and have it be informational and experiential and then experiential in the seat of the facilitator for people to work together to actually get practice and feedback on what they're doing and how they're doing it in space holding sense. Um, and then of course, like with, with COVID and everything shutting down, we, we just saw that people really started to yearn for connection for in-person connection again. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and so we started to put together uh, weekend long and week long retreats. Um, and we've done tons of them. We have work coming up, and yeah, and it's been a trip and it's been a journey. And so that's awesome. Can, if people are listening and they want to go, where do they go yeah. to find out? Um, well, we're on Instagram at our at at o u r like all of our ourbreathcollective.com, and part of that we we found the name to be. And of course, it's ourbreathcollective.com um, as our website. Um, we found the name Our Breath Collective because one, it's like a shared truth of life force that's happening right now and all the time for all of us, for everyone. But it's also like there's so many brands and people who have come along and created a, a protocol or a, a technique yeah. and kind of said like, this is my breath technique whether it's rebirthing or holotropic breathwork or transformational breathwork or Wim Hof or Buteco, there's so many methods. And we just said like, you know, I think we find value in the individualization through this process of your own ongoing science experiment through breath as a practice yes. and what it will show you and what it may lead to and where it may take you and how it may benefit you in your life in so many different ways. And, um, so that's why it's called our breath collective because we don't really subscribe to any one method, but we just try to draw on principles um, as a means for try this on and see how it goes for you and let your experience be your best teacher and keep allowing yourself openness to experience, which is really and that, ongoing. That's basically what you and I have been doing. I yeah. mean, there's, there's no, uh, well, I mean, Mondo, right? Yeah, Mondo is a technique I've taken you through so far. Yeah. yeah. Totally different than breath stuff. Right. right? Oh, yeah. Um, um, but really quickly, though, Aaron, like what I would say is, um, you know, breath work, like especially more uh, extended periods of connected breathing, 
can really lend and assist people who have really strong emotional complexities and uh, sort of like protection within themselves of like, this is so deep and was so hard to experience that it's very hard to even look at and be present to. And, and breath can be this really wonderful stream of, of energy, of movement um, that is already here, but gets kind of opened up and sort of creates this filtration system for the body to process stuff that's unprocessed. Hmm. Yeah. That's, and, that's a, I've never heard it explained like that before. And it makes sense. I mean, it's something that we're unconsciously doing all the time. It's here with us. All of us do it and tuning right. into it. I can understand how it could, it's, it's something that as human beings we take for granted sometimes and don't think about breathing's just a thing. You know, a lot does that make sense? A lot of a lot of people are just like, oh, it's just something you do. You breathe right. to stay alive. Well, it's a lot deeper than that. <laughs> yeah, and it's such a remote control to the way that we're showing up in the world and the way that we're um experiencing the world through our mind and with our body. Um I just want to give a quick shout out to my close dear friend. Probably I would call him my, my main breath teacher. His name is Aaron Overstreet and he lives there in Portland. Oh, wow. Um, and he's been a rebirther for 27 years. Um, and rebirthing is a method that I trained in with Aaron and with his teacher, uh, Leonard Orr. Um, and it really does target more of what I just spoke to this, like this emotional side of things and this kind of like revising and um refreshing of the kind of energy body through breath um and this kind of cleansing it's huh. a very healing modality it's very can be very powerful i had i had a string of very powerful experiences that i think let me speak to the reality that people can do certain practices and drop the bag Wow. And see how the bag gets dropped. Uh, I mean, I've seen video of people, you know, doing some heavy work online and. Yeah. But you know what? A lot of the video stuff I've seen recently, I talk about this a lot and I don't mean to bag on anything, but there, I feel like some of the stuff that some organizations are doing and putting online is so like isolating one little soundbite. Mm. and showing somebody having a massive cathartic experience and that's like first of all it's so personal it's so deeply sacredly personal when 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 people go through it um and second of all it's only a fraction of the experience you know um so i think that there's degrees of like there's value in showing that this is possible in these experiences but when you're utilizing it as a marketing ploy and tool to yeah. essentially capitalize and make a lot of money on it that feels different to me but, right there is yeah. why i love you man it, it is right different. there that that is like that kind of sincerity and and looking out for is it that is it's so hard today to discern what's real and what isn't everywhere everything yeah. is fast fake over the top sound bite and so it for me has a tendency to cheapen anything anything fast fake and cheap is how it feels it feels like that surface reflection because of instagram and social media largely i believe right uh and the ability of people just to self-promote and project this like methodology or approach or whatever that underneath the surface is like uh, there's a lot of just shallow shit out there now yeah and it it takes everything over the top like it ju i'll just take juicing some innocuous juicing fucking now there's the juice guru guy right that like juicing is going to change your life and okay dude i just wanted to make carrot juice man like you know? I think, you know, the what we're missing here is that literally anything can change your life if you give the attention and energy and dedication to it. You can be the juice guru and make it amazing, but it's not for everybody. 
You can be the breath person and it's not fucking for everybody. Something's got to catch you. Something's got to really like hook you in and then you go through your motions and figure it out. But people don't want to do that. They want to jump on other people's experiences or on other people's how much time they've put in. Well, I've been breathing for 20 years and now somebody comes in one year in and it's like, oh yeah, I know the fuck you don't have that experience. And I I find that with a lot of things, even relationships. Aaron and I have been married 25 years. There's no way you can be that connected to somebody in two years. I'm sorry. It doesn't fucking happen. You have to go through the uh, long years that are good, bad, and indifferent to get the kind of connection. And it's like that with anything, with food, with a yoga practice. That's why I left all of my practices. All of them are in the fucking closet going out to goodwill. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that I don't value practice. I love discipline. I really love the, um, the, I, maybe it is the ego, but like the pride that you get when you're able to really wake yourself up in the morning and take a cold shower and do your morning practice and, you know, do your chanting or whatever your thing is. There, there's a huge amount of like confidence built that it builds in within. Once you start talking about that, bring it outside of your doors and start letting people share in that private, intimate thing. There's something that it, it doesn't cheapen it, but it, it really does lose a little bit. And so I, I used to be a a yoga teacher and do all that. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't um, keep up with the way that like you were saying, Instagram and the, the outside um, wants, wants that done. Like, like the chief fast, like, okay, you want the, you want the, the number one of the, you know, of the discipline. And I realized that for me, it was hard to do that. It was hard for me to keep up with that type of thing. So I was just like, you know what? Um, and, and now whatever I do, it's, it's for myself. It's different. I don't really even talk about it and it doesn't need to be talked about because at one point I was trying to like make something of myself and, and do something. And then at another point I was like, no, that's not what this is about. If it's personal, it's personal. Very personal. Yeah. Yeah. When we live in the short attention span theater world nowadays where everybody wants, I, I did the work. Why it didn't it work? You know, like two <laughs> weeks, two weeks in, like the, the, I, I'm not getting results. I, I quit. It's like, yeah. they, you don't understand. This on to is, the next thing. Yeah. And then I'm on, then people are so quickly on to the next thing. You know, one of the things that's so good that you bring that up because uh, this whole, I saw this as a school teacher in public schools, that there is a, an, unspoken but in, in, impressed almost enforced energy of existence at least in what i saw in public schools here in in san diego in north county san diego of excessively doing and needing to learn how to multitask you you will be successful if you learn how to multitask and i've found the opposite to be true and through all of this 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 like this aspect of if you can learn how to unitask, which means if you can just be with exactly what's right in front of you. And Aaron, when I, in our session the other day, you said that to me and talk about like this whole like flip back and forth that everything, when you look at it right, is this God wink or this like this teaching that's like, there's, it's speaking to something. You told me that you really were like always kind of one step ahead of yourself. Oh, hurrying, rushing. always hurrying. Yeah. Always hurrying. You know, and I caught that and I've, and I, and in me, and I thought like, where do I apply that? How can I really apply that? You know, cause I'll get like a lot of times I'm, I'm in getting to do the work I do now and working with people, I'll have somewhat of a random schedule and I'll have maybe a 90 minute break between clients some days, right? Mm-hmm. A couple of those. And there'll be a window when I can go surf. I live on the ocean. I, live, I surf right down the street and I have a bike and a bike rack, beach cruise and a bike rack to go to Swami's is where I surf a lot. And I'll find that I'm like rushing, like, and I'm like on my bike, like getting down there, going as fast as I can. And when you told me that I was, I was going surfing on um, whatever day that was, it was maybe it was Wednesday. Um, and I just kind of went like, what happens if I slow down and just be with this, this foot as it pedals right now. <laughs> and it was like, everything became high definition. Oh, mm, like, you know? And so thank you. You're that. welcome. Man. I said that that multitasking. My dad told me like like this is back in the 90s, like 
20 something years ago my dad told when he would interview people for a position and he put he's i'll never put multitask and he would say to people he'd be like oh so you're a multitasker so that just tells me that you don't have the ability to focus on one thing and complete it Oh shit. And that would just shut people because that was a big thing on resume. Like I'm a multitasker. I can do 20 things at once. And it's like, oh, so you can do 20 things wrong and you can't focus on one thing and get it to completion. I'll tell you, man, that, that, that whole thing that I told you about realizing that came through going to fish Mexico. And, uh, it, well, it's been an underlying theme forever, but that was where yeah. I finally like, Oh shit, I'm yeah. dropping this. And, it's funny now in hindsight, again, I'm realizing like the practices that you and I are doing, you're giving me context for stuff that I was doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like practicing single pointed concentration or presence. I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Like if I'm grinding coffee beans, I'm going to grind coffee beans right now. I'm not going to yep. worry about anything else. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. I didn't have any context for that. So you're, it's, you're really helping me to like put my pieces together that were just like a, a hodgepodge in my head. It's like, oh, this click. Oh shit. That goes here. Click. And it's helping. You man. know what's funny too is I found this and this is a cool anecdote I want to quickly share sometimes the really things that we resist that we feel like that's gonna that's gonna suck <laughs> that's gonna be unpleasant oh you know? like somebody told me recently like they're like they're like oh you're 45 like you gotta get a colonoscopy soon ew get like, out of here ah, dude maybe it's 50 now is the age I'm it is 50 now. i'm 51 i still haven't done it <laughs> yeah. anyways um a great example was this is last summer i was on the east coast visiting my mom for her birthday and my dad and my sister and brother and um, I got to go see uh, the two Meriwether shows with mm -hmm. my best friend, Robbie. Um, and we had a great time. And during that time, I live in this really cool, funky old place built in 1930. No insulated heating, massive plumbing issues, but right on the ocean and a total surf shack. It's super cool, but it's really old and it's falling apart. <laughs> when I was gone, when I was gone, on the East Coast, visiting family, the woman that I share the property with, there's two units on this property, called me and said, like, we're having a major plumbing issue. And I'm like, oh, no. she's a little bit further west than me, like 10 feet, and we share the same line, same sewage line. Uh, and mine's a little bit closer out to the main line the street. And she was like, I got to go in your place to check it out. And I was like, cool, do it. You know, and she did. And she's like, yeah, it's, it ain't pretty in there. <laughs> <laughs> So I came back and sewage had come up through my shower. Oh, Ooh. oh man. and it had been like a week that I was gone. Uh, and it was like uh, literally human shit in like in the well of my shower. And oh. I just, I was so grossed out and I was like, Oh my God, this is like, I got to get hazmatted, you know, like I had to get like a bucket and, <laughs> and, um, and line it with bags and I had to get like Mel wants like to cry dustpan kind of thing right like multiple dustpans and bleach and gloves and everything it was so disgusting and I, going into it I was so resistant I was just like dreading it like oh god I was on depot got all the materials I was like you know just like fuck dude, what did I do to deserve this I went in there I swear it was a spiritual experience. <laughs> I was like scooping shit up and I was like, this is like fully exactly what this human life is. It's like shoveling others shit and my own shit. Like this is disgusting. And somehow I'm fully right here and all is well as I shovel shit, you know? Oh, wow. That, that reminds and, me when we were at Dead and Company and you, oh, we were tripping and Mel oh. had to leave the show. Because the bow, she's like, this is like the bowels of the festival. All the toilets, Ugh. they had like the flushing toilet, and you could smell like the uh, smells. Uh, the people waiting in line. The well, it was a spiritual experience, but not not, not, not like yours. No, it no, like no, not like that. But that's what it reminded. Like you see the inner where, and it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, okay, life is you, a trip. You didn't. That was just intruding on you. This wasn't like that's an obstacle that I have to get out of the way to be able to live functionally normal in <laughs> my home. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I think what I what I did in that moment was I just went like, this is it. I got this is exactly what I have to do. You have to just be with this right now and and be uh, totally in this and be present and get it done and don't rush it because it was like I had to be cautious as I was scooping shit up and putting it in a thing, you know, and like moving it together and like, and, um, anyways, yeah. And I, I referenced this term, this God wink term, and you and I had talked about it last week, Aaron. Um, and the context I can give to that real quickly is that my, uh, in 2009, in the beginning of 2009, I went through a really shocking breakup. Like I went through a really bad breakup with a woman that I had really deeply fallen in love with fallen deeply into infatuation with, but also um, strongly energetically was enamored by. And, um, and she kind of pulled the rug out from under me after four or five months. Um, like literally it's possible she had bipolar, but I, this began about a year of this like kind of loop of her coming in and out of my life and kind of my heart cracking open for me to grow, you know? And, um, but the first time that it happened with her, it was about a month that she just vanished, you know, and um, my I was destroyed. Dusty. And my parents um, and a couple of my parents, close friends who I've known my whole life, sent me this little book. They didn't even maybe write a note or anything. They just literally Amazoned me this book. And it was this tiny little book called When God Winks or The God Wink. And um, I was like, what is this sappy? <laughs> you know? And I read it and it was like a quick, short read. And this has happened a couple of times in my life that I've written mysteriously uh, with, with like impeccably perfect timing, received a little bit of literature that had a perspective that was really applicable um, in the moment. And this Godwink book got into like the, the, it, it laid out how to observe coincidences that have happened throughout your life and how these little things have coincidentally randomly showed up. But then if you back out of like it being a coincidence and recognize that there's a larger support, like what it called a God wink, you know, um, and you relax into that, that's kind of like allowing that flow to kind of be more perceived and then recognizing and this is, I don't want to get too esoteric or like sappy spiritual in speaking, but like seeing it and seeing it begin to like move and like recognizing that you do have engagement and influence with it when, when, when it, <laughs> any time right, right away. Right. You know? it, it's, um, Robert, yeah, and, Robert Anton Wilson calls it cosmic, the cosmic giggle. The cosmic giggle. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's a, uh, it's definitely something that, I mean, we were, we talked about it at the beginning of, of this conversation about like when you're at a show and you're open to the experience happening and then, you know, the, your friend is that you haven't seen in 20 years is sitting right next to you or I, it happens with me. Like, yeah. I'll be like, I want to see this person today here yeah. at the show. Yeah. Not going to look for them. There they are. Right. When I walk on, on lot, like, boom, you know, it's, we well, can try to find them. It no, you doesn't can't. work. No. Yeah, exactly. If you grasp for it, you don't. You if you're like on it. your phone, like I'm in section two, seven, you yeah. never find each other. I had this experience in, uh, in the, on that, on that Saturday night with a friend of mine from high school who I'd, who I'd wanted, who I'd, who I'd seen on the Friday night and I'd wanted to reconnect with her and like hang and boogie with her at a show and just was totally like texting and, <laughs> and it just didn't happen. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there was too much trying. Happening. Yeah. It takes you out of the experience. It takes you out of the flow of the river. All of a sudden you're sitting right. on the bank going, totally. where, where are they? <laughs> Luke, man. Um, thanks brother for on a lot of levels. Just thanks, man. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you all. Yeah. I love your smile. I got a question for you too. Are you, are you, are you, are you an athlete or have you been an athlete? In Surfer. Your... I was a basketball player, man. Okay. But, but I, but I, so I grew up in DC, um, I grew up in DC and in the nineties and, you know, I went to high school and graduated in 1996. Uh, and I went to an all boys Jesuit high school and we had, they had a, we had a really strong basketball program. I didn't make the team. Um, uh, but basketball was always my sport as a kid. Yeah. Um, um, and then I went to uh, college of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. And I started surfing. And well, as soon as I started surfing, that was it. I just, you were hooked. Dude, 
the I was hooked and the love and joy that I've had in now 25 years of surfing has been it's totally I've been all I've been so many places in the world just to go and 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 surf I've been to Indonesia I've been oh wow. I've been to Hawaii a lot I've been to Canary Islands um oh, I mean, shit. I live where I can surf and Adam that's just kind came of from like, and, and yoga I practice that. a strong yoga yeah. practice for a lot of years um well it's interesting I just got to mention that because I'm hooked on that that the 100 foot wave have you been that watching show? that about Nazarene, yeah, Nazarene and the big yeah. wave surfers and their lifestyle? It is so, it is so cool, so cool. Yeah, of good. Uh, I have a I've I've had a the ongoing friendship with a guy named Greg Long um, for about ten years now. Um, Greg's a big wave world title pro and he's a very very well known name in the surf world. Um, big wave legend. And Greg says that Nazare of all the big wave spots in the world. That he's surfed and been to, uh, Nazareth is the most terrifying one. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. I it, it is a it is a trip, man. You get, you get watching that show is like it. It's like uh, it's like going to fish shows. It's like I get goosebumps watching that and hearing them talk about it and seeing the way they approach it and being on a wave where you're doing like eighty miles an hour. You're basically a stone skipping on the water to have control in the middle of all that chaos and knowing. You could die at any moment. And Is that still... why you bought that longboard that's sitting upstairs? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. yeah. That's why. Oh. <laughs> a whole different animal surfing up there with that cold water. Oh my God. Yeah, Not just cold water, but all the elements you guys have. Um, before I moved here, I lived in a town in Oaxaca called Puerto Escondido, mm. um, and the waves there are phenomenal. It's called Mexican Pipeline. Oh shit! I mean, that's where my friend Greg Long is right now. He goes and, and during the season he goes there because the waves are get really big and i've surfed um i've surfed puerto uh medium size at most which is you know like for compared to what guys surf it at it's nothing but i can tell you from a lot of experience of being there i've just gotten destroyed so many times even just paddling out and i've been in the ocean where i've been like so scared and thought like i don't even know how i'm gonna get in oh god and um uh but those kinds of experiences in like really raw nature uh when you see the kind of stuff like that hundred foot wave that amount of power i can't believe more people don't die surfing the kind of waves that people are surfing out you know it's it's insanity they, they get to there was one recently like the, this is the second season the girl justine who's the, like the best female uh big wave surfer in the world she gets i think it was a jaws she gets torn the fuck up. You see her get caught in the apex of the wave. You see her like all of a sudden, oh, like no. limbs. It tore her arms out of the sockets. Yeah. It dislocated yeah. her arm just by being caught in like the washing machine agitating part of that wave. They brought her out. She's all broken up in like a year of rehabilitation and learning how to walk again. And then she's just even more determined. And now she's surfing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she came back and like even stronger than before. Like, yeah. oh my god, the dedication of yeah, these gnarly. people. Hey, yeah, I just love it. I love little two to four foot waves. Her, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks like I'm good with a little, you know, a ride right in. Man. You could just follow, like, bail out so easy and be like, yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, if yeah. I want to admonish everybody out there, encourage you, I guess is a better way to say it. If you're looking to make a change in your head and you've been like feeling like you needed to reach out to somebody. Maybe this is that cosmic giggle for you. Reach out, reach out to Luke. You can reach out to me and I'll put you in contact if you don't feel comfortable doing it directly or whatever. Um, I can attest to the fact that this is the real deal. And um, basically what it is is just hanging out with a brother and talking and being quiet (laughs) and it's not anything weirder than that so talking or being quiet which one both (laughs) both all right um and both uh, very important yeah and uh you know give yourself the opportunity to to make a change because you know you do what you always did you get what you always got so and luke i i do remember that hug um at the hollywood bowl and that like really appreciative um thank you and i just will repeat it again um because you know you see your partner doing something good for themselves 
and something out of their comfort zone that's positive, um, that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And so I just want to say thank you again. And I knew I was when, when you talked about it, that it was going to be amazing. And, and I'm, it's, it's the very beginning and it's, and it's already amazing. So I just want to say thank you for that. Oh, you're so welcome. Mel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just to kind of talk, just to touch on what Aaron said about like that. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm so honored that you would share like that um, about me and what I get to do with people. But uh, it's this, if you want to change your head and have it drop into your heart uh, and then kind of observe the, the resonant joy that you get to then experience in with other people. That's kind of what like, I mean, Mel and Apple, like seeing both of you at the Hollywood Bowl too, it was like, just, it was so fun. And I mean, we have a lot more boogieing to do. Oh Let's yeah. Do it, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you come up to Portland for some reason or another. I will. I'll find, well now I have a lot more reason. To yeah. Me. You got to br- visit your other brother, Aaron That's up right. here too. So. That's right. That's right. All right, yeah. man. I will, uh, We'll see each other uh, Wednesday. Yes. Much love to you all love you guys. and to your wonderful audience. Okay. And I just want to say I, I am so happy that you guys are doing what you're doing. And I'm so excited to see what the future holds for this thing because I only sense like this explosive growth of, of, of wonder getting spread through um, all of the channels that you guys are reaching people on. Yeah. So Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank with you. you. We'll, yeah. we'll see you Wednesday and um, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk soon, man. All right. Big love. Love you, brother. Enjoy. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> wow. That's, that's home slice right there. <laughs> that's the home slice. What do you think, babe? What do I think about? About Luke. I love him. I think he, I told you, I love him. I think he's great. I am grateful for his and your connection and and brotherhood um i appreciate his teaching style Mm -hmm. i like his face it's not annoying (laughs) i like his i don't want to you don't want to punch i don't want to punch his face (laughs) i (laughs) do you know what i'm talking about you know exactly what you're talking about like uh. you know (laughs) some of my dark things you know i everybody gets annoyed and, and put off by whatever you know, like just, it doesn't necessarily have to make sense. It doesn't necessarily have to have come to you at a bad time in life, but everybody just has like certain thing that they don't like. Like I don't like green or I don't like the beach or I don't, you know what I'm saying? And like, I am appreciative that, um, Luke, you've got a lot of elements that, um, aren't annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if that sounds it's, bad. Or no, what. It, you know what? Like, like we alluded to in the conversation, like you and I both have this, like it, with anything spiritual lately, Look, it's like, it's always a thing. We, like, we've, especially with, we met under spiritual circumstances. Yes, of course. So, our um, relationship has never been not that without its spiritual um, beginnings or, or musings or whatever component. Exactly. And we are still in a very, very much a spiritual stage, but we're kind of separated right now. Like you're doing whatever you're doing and I'm kind of doing whatever I'm doing and it's not linked up right now, which is, I'm not sad about it or anything about it. It's just what it is. It's like a, we're growing as individuals. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's really great to feel safe in spiritual growth instead of like, we have to watch our back. Yep. I don't feel like either Mm -hmm. one of us is in a dangerous or precarious place that we um, need to kind of warn each other about. Yeah, like, hey, babe, you know. The only, no. the only kind of thing that I feel like we need to do is kind of just be on the lookout for each other's growth and like keep our hand Support out. Support each to, other. Yeah, exactly. I want to just reiterate what I said earlier to all of you listening. It, it, look, if you felt this conversation or if you've, been turning over in your head like man i i really need to reach out but i don't know where to go and like i just want to like start something fresh and and start learning and 
make my head feel better and get into my heart a little bit. And this is a, a great, and this is a great way to do that. And, and a way without any dogma or jargon or bullshit. And, and you might not, that some people don't even know what that means. Get it from your head to your heart. Like those are just words. Right. Well, and, like, and, and also from somebody that is part of our community, that's, Still likes to party and hang out and. Well, I know that was a big part for you. It was, that's huge. That's huge. I'm, I think that's probably the only reason that it's happening. I don't in, know about that. I in in the in the context that it's in right now, I think that anything because it came through this yes. avenue. Yes. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. That's where I thought. Yeah, definitely because it came through this. So. This is that thing coming through this avenue to all of yeah, you. Yeah, and I there. haven't found anything like that yet. And so what I've been doing on, on my own spiritual practice or road, I've been going back into my family. I, on Duncan Trussell, years and years ago, he was talking to um, a Buddhist uh, teacher and he was talking to her about all these incredible things that she's accomplished in the him, Himalayas, <laughs> <laughs> Himalayas, <laughs> right? But, um, oh, and, you know, being a Sherpa to these people and just all these incredible, like, selfless acts. And so he's asking her, you know, looking, talking to somebody like you, you're doing all these incredible things oh, for the world. Man. Like, how could... I, you know, somebody like me or anybody listening, how could we have, you know, do something even close to what you're doing? And, you know, I'm not going to say it verbatim, verbatim, but she was basically like, if you've got a family, that's where you start. Start with your sister or your mom or your brother or your uncle or your daughter or whatever you've got. Start with that. Because if you're in, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but like if a p- opposition to any one of those people that I mentioned or somebody in your family and there is an opportunity for reconciliation or for help or for changing the, the script on that relationship, then that's where you go mm. because it's so easy to make, and we've said this before, it's easy to make friends with somebody who doesn't know you and doesn't know your bad habits and doesn't know what you get pissed off at. It's easy. But when you're trying even further to make amends or to be with somebody that does know all those things about you and you're still trying, that is one upping your yourself like and where you've been. And so that's why this... um thing with my mom has been so important for me because I was so upset about it on a deep level and I don't want to be upset about my mom on a deep level you know I want to have healing on a deep level and even if I don't agree with everything my mom does or says or the way that she behaves or acts I want to feel good when I think about her and I want to feel love and so I put my spirituality back into my family and that's it's not I'm not teaching a class or a breath you know breath work or uh you know hands-on healing You're method not teaching yoga this week I'm not doing that in this part of my 40s I am internally um making amends with anything that's cross within myself and my own family well shit I that's mean, that's a good place to start. Three Tend weeks. The part of the garden you can reach. That's right. Three yeah. weeks with my mom. That's a fucking shit ton of work. <laughs> that's uh, you. Nobody except for these two guys next to me yeah. knows how much it takes to listen. The house needs the house needs a nap. Dude, the the listening component. Period. Not even any other work. It's it's a lot. And yeah. so there's been some good work happening over the last oh, three weeks, mm-hmm. dude. Yep, for sure. So yeah. That's that, everybody. And uh, thanks thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, and, Luke. And thank you, Luke, for doing what you do and for being present. And this is Luke's picture. Showing up. Oh, that's Luke. nice. That's how I was going to say, like, his, like, meeting him that night, he was like a minty, fresh breath of cool air, his hug. <laughs> he smelled good. Like, he smelled good. He it was, like, just the right energy that went through you. It was like... Oh, oh yeah. Thanks for the nice mint and the cool attitude. Right on.
That's a great way to describe yeah. it. Minty fresh A-D-D Luke. Fresh Luke. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to call the episode. Luke, minty fresh. All right, everybody. We will be back on Monday. And uh, we'll do the No Simple Road weekly rewind done in collaboration with the Edible Beats out the of Edible Beats. Denver, Colorado. Hey, guess what? No Simple Road is going to be performing at Mojo Family Fest. Woo! And we're going to be at Peach. And we're going to be at Ophelia's on the Wednesday before the Dicks Run with Andy Frasco podcasting live. And Oregon Country Fair. There's a lot well, of things happening right now. Stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll be back on Monday. We love you guys. Until then, smile a stranger. Take care of each other. Safety third. Hydrate. And uh, take time to breathe. Oh, yeah. And be somebody's minty freshness for the week. Yeah. That's a great idea. This is Steve Choi, host of the Musicians Guild podcast, part of the Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. Within the four walls of the Musicians Guild, we'll be discussing the habits, idiosyncrasies, experiences, and general psychology of my friends and peers, all involved with music in various capacities. Listen and subscribe at SoundTalentMedia.com.